Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. I thought we would discuss uh, the history of Allsop. So Allsop made a cleaning machine, a record cleaning, handheld cleaning machine. This was the original Allsop. And um, so what you would do is you'd, you'd put the fluid that they supply onto your platter and you'd put this on the spindle and you'd spin it around. They also had a, another system where you would use a pad that they provide and a pin so that you didn't have to stress your platter, which I think is a good idea. So this is the original also. And the way it would work is when the pad got dirty, you would peel this off and you'd replace the pad and then you had to push this ring back on. And it, it, it wasn't the easiest thing to do. And you would sometimes, you know, I just did, did it better this time than I've ever done it before. But you would do this and it wouldn't go on right and a piece would stick out. But that was just about perfect as long as you make sure to get it in enough so that the plastic doesn't scratch your record. So that was the original also. And I happen to have here the original vintage box and also kit. I don't have the fluid anymore, but it came like this. This was the really nice one with the, oh, there's the, the pin is in this one. That's good. The pin is in this one. And you would clean your record and it came with a, uh, a pad that you would use, which I don't have anymore. But that, that is the original also. And then of course they stopped making the pads and a lot of people who had the original also were out of luck, except for people like me who, when also stopped making them, when vinyl was going away, you could go to like a record store, which they used to have, if you remember, there are still some, and they were getting rid of these, these pads. These are the also pads, three for 50 cents. The original price was much higher. The original price was four ninety nine. Back in 1987, it's on there. So uh, in 2001, th it's funny, th the price says this is from uh, some warehouse, 11.87, 4.99. Then they changed the price in uh, 2001, in August of 2001 to 50 cents. So of course, being a schnurr, if you know what that word means, I bought dozens of them. I mean, why wouldn't I buy them? I bought dozens of these. I've got, a, I've got literally an entire cabinet full of these things. And every once in a while, I go on eBay and put them up there for like, I think, $10. $10 for a three thing. And people snap them up. And I take that money and I buy more used records. Okay. So Allsop replaced that with the Allsop 2. And uh, I have one of the original Allsop 2s here. So it's got two things of fluid. And this is the cartridge holder, and they supplied these cartridges. And so you would pop this in here, and then it works pretty much the same way. And, and so that went out of production just about when vinyl was making its big comeback. And uh, I went on this kick to bring back the Orbitrack, bring back the Orbitrack. And they kept telling me, nah, no one's gonna want records, it's gonna go away, we're not gonna do that. But as of last year, they brought back the Orbitrack. This is, this is the Orbitrack 3 Pro. This was the Orbitrack 2 Amateur. This is the Orbitrack 3 Pro. So they don't give you the plastic case anymore, which, which is fine, you don't really need the plastic case. And so what they have is a box that uh, a Cretan can't open. Here we go. So it's basically the same same device. Uh, and is it wider or is that my imagination? Is that my imagination running away with me? Wait a second. Let's, I gotta check that. Okay. This is the two. This is the three. Did they make? A, yes. It looks like it's. No, maybe it isn't. Maybe it is the same size. But anyway, you put that in there. And, and you clean your record. And they give you, in the three, in the Pro, they give you this pad here. And you put this down on a flat surface. And then 
you take, they give you a pin and you put the pin in there and that way you can clean this without, and you can spin it around without it being done on your platter so you don't stress your bearing. And I'm not going to show you how, to, how that gets done. It's pretty basic and that's how it gets done. So that's all sup and they give you this, this is uh, pomegranate juice based cleaning fluid. No, it's not really. And that's that. I, I don't know what's in this fluid. They don't say. And so I'm always loath to use a fluid where they don't tell you what's in it. I think you should know what's in it. If it's a super secret formula, that's a load of BS. They should tell you alcohol-based, non-alcohol-based, uh, surfactant-based, non... Because there are fluids that don't use a surfactant. And so you, you, you put it on your record and it, it beads up. It doesn't go into the record. And they have a reason for that. They think it, it's easier to get it out. It's easier to vacuum it out if it doesn't seep into the grooves. On the other hand, if it doesn't seep into the grooves, how is it cleaning the record? I can't answer that. Anyway, so that's the history of Allsop's record cleaning devices uh, culminating in the Pro 3 right here. Okay, thank you for watching.